Hey guys, American Pizza Books here, and today I am back with another book review, and today I'm going to be reviewing Dead Man's Song by Jonathan Mayberry. Now, this is the second book in the Pine Deep trilogy by Jonathan Mayberry. It is basically a vampire trilogy, vampire horror trilogy, and it takes place in this town called Pine Deep. And basically, Pine Deep is this big tourist attraction on Halloween and stuff, so everyone comes there to for the hay rides and for all the scares and thrills and everything like that. Um, so yeah, and I actually did a review on the first book, uh, Ghost Road Blues, and you can check that out on my channel. But yeah, so, this is gonna be the review on the second book. Um, so, I'm gonna kinda do this review in the same way that I did the, the uh, review for the first book. I'm gonna try to do this for my book reviews from now on. I'm gonna talk about the good stuff first that I liked about this book, or just the stuff that I liked about this book first, and then I'm gonna talk about the stuff that I didn't like so much. So yeah, basically the good and then the bad, so... Start off with the good stuff. Um, one of the criticisms I had of the first book was that I felt like some of the characters weren't uh, really fleshed out that much. I didn't feel like a lot of them, with the exception of a few, none of them were really, or not none of them, but I mean, most of them didn't really feel like they didn't necessarily feel like cardboard cutouts, but they almost kind of did, especially certain characters like some of the, the uh, antagonists of the book. But in this book, I feel like the characters are a lot more developed and we get to know them a little bit more better, so like I feel like the characters are more fleshed out in this book. And I also feel like some of the characters, because there was one character in particular that I didn't, I just didn't really like that much, and it was in the first book, uh, a.k.a. Val, who was uh, Crow's fiancé. Um, and Crow was one of the main characters of the book, and his fiancé is Val. That was one of the characters I didn't care for so much, um, but in this book, I feel like the characters that I didn't care for, I, I'm beginning to like more now. I feel like they're more de getting more developed and more fleshed out, and some of the things that they go through kind of makes you sympathize with them and like them better, and that's what kind of happens with Val in this book. So we kind of see her develop, you know, as she's kind of getting over her father's tragedy because her father was killed in the last book, uh, Henry Guthrie. So, the characters are definitely better in this book than they were in the last book. They feel a lot more fleshed out, and they don't just feel like one-dimensional characters, um, again, with the exception of a few, which would be Crow and the, the mayor of the town, Terry Wolf. Um, and I guess, what else? Oh, uh, another one of my complaints from the first book is that some of the dialogue between the characters felt a little over-the-top. Uh, a little over-the-top, um... I don't know, I just didn't feel like the dialogue flowed real smoothly between characters in the first book. I mean, it was okay uh, most of the time, but sometimes it just felt like, uh, yeah, you know, this seems pretty over the top, even for a vamp, even for a, you know, fictional book. Um, but I feel like the, the dialogue between the characters in this book flowed a lot better, and I feel like that just kind of, that's just kind of how it is. I mean, because Ghost Road Blues was Jonathan Mayberry's first work of fiction, um, so I guess it'd just be natural. So this is his second book, so I feel like he's gotten time to, you know, read over his, the first book and kind of, you know, uh, examine the dialogue, and he's kind of got a more, you know, good handle on it, good grasp on the dialogue in this book. So that was definitely a lot better. Um, the plot, the plot was one of the strong points I felt like that I pointed out in the first book, and I still like the plot. This book is pretty much, I wouldn't say it's filler, but it, it kind of is, but... It's a very slow build, you know, This these books are building up to something, to a big climax, you know, in the third book, which I'm currently reading right now, and I'm actually, like, about 75% of the way through. Um, but it's it's definitely building towards a big, you know, payoff at the end, so this, it's, this is kind of just it continuing to build up and kind of build the plot, and um, you're kind of learning things, and the characters are, start, are just kind of starting to f figure out what's going on around them and everything, and what, what these you know, like, they're starting to figure out about the, well, not exactly, but they're starting, they're, they don't completely have it figured out by the end of this book, but they have a pretty good idea, at least a few of the characters do, or most of the characters, really. Um, and actually, speaking of characters, to backpedal for a second, there is a new character, well, I guess he was in the first book, but he didn't really have that big of a role, but in this book, uh, he has a definitely a bigger role, and that's the character of the reporter, Newton or Newt, as he's called in the book, um, and I wasn't really sure how to feel about him, but by the end of the book, I felt like I liked him. He's kind of a, he's a reporter, um, 
and he's a journalist for the one company for one of the for for uh, the main company that's not in Pine Deep, but it's a little bit away from Pine Deep, and uh, I don't know, he, he kind of comes off as a weasel at first, but then like it, as the book goes on and goes on, you kind of start to sympathize with him a little bit more and what he goes through because he kind of gets involved in this plot and everything and all this shit that's going on with Crow and Val and and you know, Terry and everyone else that's involved, Mike and everyone else, so you kind of, you know, develop sympathy for for Newt and everything, you kind of grow to like him, and I think I liked him by the end of the book. Um, but yeah, so plot is good, it's definitely a slow burn, but I think Maybury does a pretty good job of keeping your interest for the most part. Um, let's see, uh, I know the villains, I know that's kind of goes hand in hand with characters, but the villain... The villains, I felt like, were a little bit, uh, especially like Vic Wingate, who was an alcoholic, and Tow Truck Eddie, who is uh, a religious, just basically an over-the-top religious, just just religious nut, basically. I felt like those characters were also just, they felt almost like cardboard cutouts, but I feel like in this book we got just a sense of how twisted that they were, so I guess we did get some more development with those characters. Um... And, yeah, we just, we just got a sense for just how evil, how really evil and twisted they are. And we kind of get a sense of Vic Wingate's dedication to the main villain of the book, um, who they refer to as the man, um, whose real name is Ubo Griswold. And you find out about the main villain, you find out about Ubo Griswold some in this book and then even more in the next and the last book. But, yeah, definitely an interesting villain, main villain at least, so... Even the antagonist of the, of the story, I feel like, got a little bit more development in this book than in the last book. Which, I guess, makes sense because it is a trilogy, so I guess it would make sense that some of the characters in the first book weren't that developed, but, you know, still, it's, it's, it improves on it in this book. Uh, what else? You know, the descriptions were something that I felt like was a strong point in the first book, you know, because Mayberry does a really good job of building up this town and the atmosphere and the world building of this of this town and everything, and he really puts a good picture in your head of what this town looks like and, you know, just what it's all about and everything. You know, like I said, it's an attraction. It's a tourist attraction, definitely, for Halloween and, and everything like that. So you get a good feel for the atmosphere and everything. Uh, I don't know what else. You know, the action scenes are still... Well, there's not... There's not a ton of action in this one. There is some, but like I said, it's a very slow burn, so... There's not a ton, but there is some, though, definitely, especially one at the at near the end of the book, where one of the characters is uh, fighting uh, one of the uh, vampires. Um, and when the action scenes do pop up, they're written very well, so, because Mayberry, before he started writing fiction, he did write books, like, self-help books and stuff like that on, um, like, uh, Muay Thai and stuff like that, and karate and, 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 and things like that, so it would make sense that the action scenes are, are written pretty well. Um, yeah, I don't really, I mean, I guess I don't really have a lot of complaints about this book. I feel like it improves over the first book, um, but there were, there, I do have a few complaints, um, so I guess getting into the stuff that I didn't like so much, I guess, well, actually, this isn't really so much a complaint about the story or the characters or anything like that, but this particular edition of the book, I don't know if it's, if it's this particular edition, it probably is, but... There were a lot of typos in this one. There were a lot of typos and grammatical errors, so I don't know if this particular copy was just put out before before it got an editor or something or what, but there were a lot of typos in this book. A lot of grammatical errors, so it kind of took me out of the story at times. Not very much, but a few times I had to go back and read what it was supposed to say or something. And there's numerous examples in, in, in this copy of the book, at least. Um... Uh, if I if I had it, I, I probably should have marked it so I could read a specific example for you. But I mean, just things like if instead of instead of that instead of like he went to that area, it would be he went to like T H area or he went to area, and you know it should you know in between went to an area there should be like the or that you know or something like that. Just for example, but yeah, just a lot of that in this book or at least in this particular edition. Um. And something else that bugs me, and, and going back to Val, who I who I said I did I did like Val a lot more in this book than I did in the last book. In the last book, I just didn't find her very particularly likable. But 
she's basically, uh, I guess she's basically the main female protagonist of this book, and just a lot in this, in this book, and in the, and in the last book that I'm currently reading, there's so many times when the characters are like, oh, you know, they're like, they're, they're talking, they're, they're, they're talking about her, they're talking to her, they're talking to Crow, her fiance, and they're like, oh, you know, you're lucky, and she's such a, she's uh, tough as nails and everything, and she's so strong and everything, and I just feel like Mayberry is really laying it on thick that Val is, is this strong, independent woman, and it's like, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, Val is, is a strong woman, she's a tough nails, a tough as nails person, I get it, okay, I mean, you're kind of laying it on thick there, so I mean, just the whole, you know, strong, independent woman thing, like, that's fine, but like, just... I get it, okay, I mean, it's, it's getting annoying, it gets to the point where it just gets annoying, so, I mean, you know, I mean, I, especially in the last book that I'm reading, there's a, there's a, there's a point where it just, it keeps happening, like, people keep saying, oh, you know, you're, you're lucky, Crow, she's a, she's, a, she's tough, or she's, she's really, she's, and it's just like, oh, God, I get it, okay, she's a strong, she's a, she's a strong female character, I get it, but quit, quit laying it on so thick, you know, so, I guess that would be one of my complaints. Um, I, I, I don't really have a lot of complaints for this book, honestly. I mean, I guess the pace, I, I did say it was a slow burn, so I guess, I feel like, I guess, I, I don't know, I feel like this trilogy just, it has a bit of fat to it. It definitely has some, f definitely fat to it. And I definitely feel like, some of it could be removed. Like, I feel like this series could get to the... I don't know, like... For the most part, it serves its purpose, but... I do feel like it can be... It can feel very long-winded at times. So, I feel like some of it can be cut. In particular, there's a scene in this book. There's a, there's a, a love scene in this book. That goes on for 10, 11 pages. And while I was reading that, I was just like, okay... All right, I get the point. I get the point. You know, let's let's get on with it. Let's go. You know, so I guess there's just I know I said this book is kind of filler at the beginning, um, which it is and it isn't at the same time. But I definitely feel like some of the contents could be cut. Some just that aren't needed and they just feel kind of just like I said, long winded. You know, it could it, the fat and the trilogy could be trimmed a little bit. So yeah, I don't feel like it needs to be as long as it is. I feel like it, it could get to the point quicker. So, yeah, I mean, but like I said, I don't mind it being a slow burn, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I just kind of just, okay, you know, just let's get to the climax sooner, you know, of the, of the story. But yeah, so I guess that would be just another thing that I didn't, don't care for so much. Um, uh, well, I guess, I guess, the I guess the only other complaint I might have is I don't know I feel like sometimes not very often but every once in a while there's a lot of you know you know tell don't show like if you're trying to get a point across about a character or you know trying to you know make a point about the, the story or whatever you're supposed to don't you don't you don't tell the you know, just show them you know you don't need to, to tell them constantly tell them you know about something just you know let it let it show through what happens you know and I feel like on occasion there's like a lot of tell don't show especially with the villain because we haven't really the villain is is very much the man Ubel Griswold is very much a presence he kind of communicates telepathically with with the characters with a few of the characters and we get that, and we kind of get his presence, but we haven't actually gotten him, at, like, as a, as a, like, full, like, physical character and interactions with everyone, so we get that he's evil and that he's a twisted motherfucker, but, like, we don't, like, you know, I'd, I'd like to get more, and even where I'm at in the third book yet, that hasn't really happened really, it's, it's, it's kind of happened, but not really, if that even makes any sense, so, yeah, I guess that's kind of, you know, the author's telling you how evil this character is, but but we're not really we're seeing it, but but not enough for me personally to, to get the point across. So yeah. But anyways, overall though, I did like this book. I would give it like a four out of five. Definitely an improvement over the first book. And yeah, I recommend it. So 
that's it for this one, and I'll talk to you guys later. So peace, and keep on reading.